like no other place here in the Philippines. It's a city that offers a delightful study in contrast, a place very rich in its diversity. And you can see it everywhere in their cultural heritage, architecture, cuisine, religious beliefs, and so much more. But the one fact that remains consistent amidst all this diversity is its beauty, the beauty of its city and the people. The name Zamboanga is itself rooted in beauty and a bit of confusion. Zamboanga City, situated at the tip of the Zamboanga Peninsula, at the bottom of the Mindanao Island in the southern Philippines. When the early Malays arrived to settle here, they came upon a land abundant with beautiful, blooming flowers, and so they called the place Jambangan meaning land of pot of flowers. But the native Bajaos and Samals who settled on and off the shorelines were confused with the name Jambangan and instead called the place Sambuangan. Then came the Spaniards. 1593, a group of Spanish missionaries landed at Caldera Bay, now called Recodo. But it was not until the 23rd of June, 1635, the city's founding date, that marked the change of the name from Sambuangan or Sambuanga to Zamboanga. It was on this date that the Spaniards began building a stone fortress that stands majestic even to this day, the Fort Pilar. Originally called Real Fuerza de San Jose, it was a coastal fort built to ward off attacks from the Moros, the Dutch, and the British. Father Melchor de Vera, a Jesuit priest who is also an engineer of the Spanish army, laid the foundations of this grand citadel. It became the center of settlement where the city grew itself around. When it was rebuilt in 1719, it was renamed Real Fuerza de Nuestra Señora del Pilar de Zaragoza, in honor of Our Lady of Pilar. Fifteen years later, in 1734, her statue was embossed on the fort's east wall as a front piece atop the entrance. Eventually, this entrance was sealed when it became a shrine, especially after stories of miracles that are now part of Zamboanga folklore. Fort Pilar holds a distinct place in Zamboanga as a historical, cultural, and religious icon. But if its gray stone walls are the oldest physical reminder of the Spanish presence here in Zamboanga, there's another one that also thrives to this day, the spoken kind. The building of Fort Pilar gave rise to yet another unique characteristic to the city. Since the fort's construction called for a diverse workforce, some Spanish soldiers and a hodgepodge of laborers from different parts of the country found themselves working together, bringing their own dialect with them. 
out of necessity, a new language was born, the Chabacano de Zamboanga. A mix of 60 to 70 percent Spanish and the rest being a blend of native words. After hundreds of years, the Chabacano is still the predominant medium of communication and has set Zamboanga City in a distinct place in the map. Puede ustedes imaginar que ustedes doltalliana España. Yes, this unique city has been called the Philippines' Little Spain. Just like the Chabacano language, Zamboanga's cuisine is basically Spanish in origin, with hefty helpings of various local flavors such as spices and coconut milk. Meet the curacha, a deep sea crab and a delicacy in Zamboanga. A visit to the city's renowned Alavar seafood restaurant will give you a taste of Zamboanga's fusion of dishes. But the city's multicultural makeup means a fusion of other dishes such as Chinese, Islamic, Japanese, American, and other Asian cuisine are also available. More signs of a colonial past with their Spanish and American influences can be seen all around the city proper. Traditional architecture, refurbished to adapt to the necessities of modern living. This is what remains of a typical 17th century Spanish square originally named Plaza de Juan de Salcedo. It was later named Plaza Pershing after John Black Jack Pershing, an American who served as governor under the American administration. A few meters across Plaza Pershing is the city hall. In spite of its Hispanic design, it was actually built in 1905 by the federal government of the United States for the American governors that served the area. Now, it is where the city mayor holds office. A few minutes walk from the city hall is Pettit Barracks. Occupied by the American forces, the site was named after Colonel James S. Pettit, who later became Inspector General of Zamboanga. Now the barracks houses rows of the city's government offices. Seven point five kilometers from the city proper is Pasonanka Park popular tourist attraction, it's been named Beautiful Park and Little Baguio of the South due to its climate, natural beauty, and the fact that it's situated 500 feet above sea level and close by lush hills and mountains. Here's where you'll find the oldest tree house in the city, equipped with a comfort room. If you wish to spend the night here, just secure a permit from the mayor's office and accommodation is free. 
Boy Scout camp within its grounds has become a popular place for Scout Jamborees. It is also where you find the Muslim-inspired architecture of the local government building, which houses a convention center. The aviary with its exotic collection of birds. A butterfly garden. And one of locals' favorite weekend getaways, the Pasonanka swimming pool, with its fresh, cool water flowing from the mountain of Muruk and exits to the Sukabun River into the ocean. Located on the Upper Pasonanka is the Abong Abong Freedom Park, where an unknown Filipino soldier of World War II lies in eternal rest. Then, up its winding hills, the religious can follow the Stations of the Cross. Stations 1 to 13 are in niches as you make your way up and up and up. Then at the 14th and last station, beyond its huge white cross, is a breathtaking view of the city, the Santa Cruz Islands and the faraway mountains of Basilan. Peoples and minarets make Zamboanga City skyline, speaking of dynamic cultures that coexist to this day. Approximately 30 minutes away from the city proper is the village of Taluksangai, one of the oldest Muslim communities in Zamboanga. Here you will find the very first mosque in the Zamboanga Peninsula. The Taluksangai Mosque, built in 1885. Itong Taluksangai Mosque, ito ang kauna-unahang mosque dito sa Sambuanga Peninsula. This was built last 1885, year 1885. Ngayon, nang magkaroon na itong mosque, nakatayo na ito, ang mga taga-ibang bansa tulad ng Turkey, Malaysia, Indonesia, pati yung itong Saudi Arabia, uh, nagsasend sila ng mga misyonari nila dito, bumibisita dito. Pinatayo ito ni Abdullah Nuno Maas de Pers. Tapos naging kwan na ito, sentro ng Islam dito sa Sambuanga. city stands what is considered to be the most modern and biggest church in Mindanao, the Metropolitan Cathedral of Our Lady of Immaculate Conception. Outside, it displays a modern architectural design, but inside, amidst its clean, whitewashed walls, it still clings to traditional concepts. The cross layout of the church, similar to cathedrals of old, and the conventional subjects and symbols of the faith in its stained glass windows, mixed in with contemporary geometric patterns. A look at the design atop the cathedral's main entrance offers a fascinating peek into some of what the Zamboanginos take in pride. The Tree House at Pasonanka Park.
the land's rich agriculture. The town landmark, that is the city hall. Their faith. The historic Fort Pilar. The sea and its bounty. The iconic Vinta. Abundance of flowers from which the city's name first took root. Book ended with the intricate and colorful weave design of the native Yakans, who are considered to be among the best weavers in the Philippines. It is a colorful testament of what makes Zamboanga so special and unique. Zamboanga Hermosa, beautiful Zamboanga. It's a place that never fails to enchant any visitor in more ways than one. <laughs>